Hey guys, and welcome to another video. Today we've got a young fellow here, this is Buck, who's a rescue horse by one of our new students. And I literally haven't done anything with him. He's just arrived and the owner's just spent a few minutes just doing a bit of a play around with him. But this is his third session now with us. He's, we have no idea if he's ever been ridden, given his age and how, how um, skinny he was when the owner got him, we seriously doubt it. But So today's goal is we'd love to ride him if we could. We may not. We'll see. We certainly want to get, it, get him saddled today and carrying it around. So that's what today's all about. And we'll just see how much we get done and see how he goes. So with this guy, everything is about confidence. He was real sceptical. And rightly so, you know, he's been physically abused, malnourished, wasted away. He was, the owner's got some pretty, pretty bad photos of him. And so he's got every reason in the world not to trust humans. But for him to survive in the human world, he's got to learn that not all, all of us are out to get him. And he's doing that. This guy really wants to be a be friend. So with him, his biggest problem when we first got him was when he gets scared, he, doesn't, he didn't move his feet. He just froze, locked up. And that was, it's not an uncommon thing in horses in that people think the horse is calm, relaxed, and ready for the next bit. And when you look at them and you go, well, that horse is petrified. You know, he should be running and bucking and acting like a Fruit Loop, but he's not. He's just standing still. He's frozen. So for this guy, it was all about teaching him to get him to move these feet. Show me when you're a bit bracy like that. Don't just freeze, move your feet. So that hopefully I'd much rather be riding a horse that wants to run on me than a horse that wants to freeze on me. Because if their feet are moving, at least I've got a good chance of directing them, controlling them, placing them where I want. But if the feet are just frozen in the ground, then I can't do anything. I can't move anything. I can't help the horse relax because we're just stuck there. And then after the... So what usually happens after a horse freezes is they come unstuck real fast and generally they go up. They just explode. So I never want to ride a horse whose first instinct it, when they get worried is to freeze because that gets you killed, for real. So for all this guy's groundwork is about getting him to move his feet, getting him to relax about energy, building in the normal communication tools which we have for every horse, so about moving our hips, lovely, moving our shoulders, moving our shoulders, and we'll just hang in here, he's going, there it is, good boy. And I like that, he thought about maybe sucking back, which he's been doing since he arrived, and he thought, no, 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 I know what to do, let's go forward. So that was nice. Understanding, energy from behind sends me forward, like that. Good. And a little energy in front slows me down. There it is. Good. This guy had a real thing about his ears, or does have a real thing about his ears. Someone's used that as a, a, pulling, a pulling post. So we're just going to hang in here and hold, and now I'm going to ask him to move his feet. I'm not going to pull on his ear, but my hand's just going to hang there. And then when he softens, my hand will go away. There. So it's that momentary, momentary thought on his, on his part about, I can cope. His head comes down. He physically relaxes a little bit. You take your hand away. Get him to stand still. Good. Your hand goes to the problem source, he braces, head goes in the air. Wait until the horse somehow softens, then take your hand away. With this guy, I'm also feeling for those, the brace in his feet. I want him to be able to do that. If he gets a bit of a fright, which is me going to his ears, I don't want him just bracing up those feet. I want him still thinking about he can move those feet, just like that. On his first session, we, we couldn't even get close to that, not even close. Good, so 
he's passing some of our checks pretty easily. Now, over here, he, he, that's just confusion. There we go. So one of the things you would have heard me say at the clinics lots of times is, if a horse is trying for me, I, I rarely increase the pressure. This guy's a perfect example, especially just then. He was, he was trying to work out what I wanted. He was trying. I could see it. I could see his brain going, I'm not sure, Dave, but I'm trying. And he was. So my rope didn't get stronger, which is totally different to another horse is that they actively work against you. You can just about see in their eye going, I know what you want, but I'm not going to do it for whatever reason. This guy is not like that. He will get confused and then he, and he'll get scared. But as long as I can see him thinking about trying an answer, trying an answer, I don't need to get stronger. Because the energy is just about get, getting them to search for, for the answer. If they're already searching, you don't need to do anything else. You just got to wait. Wait for them to find what you want. And then you just release. You quit. Go, yeah. Follow that feel. There it is. Follow that feel. There it is. Follow that feel. There it is. There it is. Good. There it is. Good. Now, if this guy, every time he gets a fright from something, so when I reached for him then, he got that little shake, that little jump. If you quit, if you back off, if you go, oh, I don't want to scare my horse, you're training your horse to be scared. So you have to keep doing it. So we do it again. I just want to rub on you. 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 I know what I want. He's a bit worried about this action. Okay. Now I'm intentionally doing it like this because I know he wouldn't cope. He needs to be able to cope. He needs to be able to deal with this because we can't always be really, really slow and soft and because that's just sort of life. If we have to start that way, then that's all right. But we now need to build the ante. We've got to build the, what you can cope with. One day somebody's just going to come in here and go, oh, Buck, you're a nice looking horse and give you a rub. There we go. Good man. Energy from behind sends you forward. That's not a punishment. I don't want it to be a punishment, and I don't want him to think it's a punishment. This just means hustle your feet. Good man. There's our licking at you. Reach for his nose. Now push to slow the shoulder, lift to move the outside leg. Beautiful. Step to my one o'clock. Step to my one o'clock. Now push a little if I have to. Good. Energy up. So the way I'm moving from the ground is the way we're going to ride him. As we go around the circle, we want him looking into the circle a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. Soften that jaw just a whisker, mate. Soften that jaw just a whisker. Soften that jaw. Soften that jaw. There. Nice. Soften that jaw. Good. That's fine. Up a gear. Now we're going to swap hands. We're going to push to slow the shoulder. Push to slow the shoulder. There. And the outside leg steps out. Good man. All right. <coughs> now let's do some proper desensitization, if you want to call it that. This means nothing, Buck. This is Dave just playing with ropes. 
So if you have your horse who's really quite worried about high energy, like this guy, I'm intentionally turning away from him and I'm walking away from him. We'll build it to the point where I can face him and, and be near him more, but for the moment, not a hope. So set yourself up to succeed. If you know your horse can't possibly cope, then don't start there. Any time, when, when it's fear-based, have the problem walk away from the horse. Golden rule. Have the problem walk away from the horse. There it is. When the problem goes quiet, when the horse gets a bit curious. So one day, the problem appears. Cars, motorbikes, kangaroos, stupid people. And it doesn't go away. You've got a fighting chance with your horse of him coping. Because he's expecting them to go away when he gets curious. Good. Now I can up the ante a bit, can't I? Now remember at the beginning of this, we talked about this guy freezes when he gets scared. So he's standing still. Cool. But can I move his feet? Ah, good man. If this guy was frozen, he wouldn't have moved his feet. So that's a really important test for you to, to check out. Yes, you can stand still and do this with your really heart. Excellent. But can you do that and ask that horse to move his feet? There's my problem. That one. So we don't ever want your horses shutting down. And what they do mentally is they close their eyes, they go inside themselves and go, if I just ignore it long enough, it'll go away. <laughs> They're petrified. Good. We're going to put a saddle on this guy's back shortly. So we better be able to make sure we can throw a rope over his back. So we're going to throw a, a girth around there. We're going to throw a saddle blanket. We're going to throw a saddle. So notice how I've got the lead rope relatively short so I can control his head if he drops that hip towards me. And he would. If he got a real fright, he would do that because he's been looking after himself for a while. Again, it's not out of malice. It's purely out of fear. And you, can, you might not be able to see it, but he's just setting his body up there with a bend away from me. He's got the ribs rolled in towards me. And he's just in a defensive posture. That's okay but I'm not going to quit when he's defensive. We're going to move his hip here a little. Let's move your hip here a little. So I keep doing what's worrying him, but then I try and set him up so he's not so defensive. Roll your hip off, mate. Roll your hip off. Here it comes. Roll your hip off. Roll your hip off. Roll your hip off. Roll your hip off. There it is. So whatever your horse is thinking, forget about doing. Whatever your horse is thinking when you're there, when you quit something, that's the thought you're telling them is the right thought. Okay, so movement, what they're doing, comes from their thoughts. So if you can start to work out what they're thinking, release on that. Then life becomes really easy. If the horse is thinking about going forward, stopping, going sideways, collecting up, roll back, whatever. If they're thinking about it, you'll probably get it without too much hassle. But if they're thinking the exact opposite, if they're thinking escape, if they're thinking no, if they're thinking I'm scared, if they're thinking run backwards when you want forwards, then you're just going to be fighting your horse every time. There it is. All right, so now we're going to grab our saddle blanket. We'll grab our saddle. We'll do the next bit. All right, one saddle blanket. So you'll notice the way I do this. I'm not sneaking around this guy. His job is to stand still and relax. My job is to set it up so he can do it. 
No, I don't mind that he's actually creeping here too much. No, that doesn't worry me. I need him to go to stand still before we hop on him. But keeping in mind this guy's history about freezing, the fact that he's tentatively sort of moving tells me about his fear, his worry. And I like that. He's, 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 he's turned a corner. He goes, I'm worried and I need to move. Excellent, buddy. Good. Now I just got to get you confident enough that you're happy to stand still. I'd much rather have a horse telling me by moving or jumping around or whatever they're doing that they're worried and scared about something than standing still and freezing and you know they're scared. So we just keep, there we go, we just keep doing this until he finds a way that he can stand still himself. Good. You know, my saddle's going to whack him accidentally at some point on that hip, I guarantee it. So you'll see a lot of people when they're doing young horses or, you know, colt starting or whatever you want to call it, and they get a lot of stuff out. You know, they've got beach balls and they've got pontoon things and a whole bunch of gear. What they're trying to do, well, in my mind, when I'm watching them, what they're doing is they're trying to either get the horse over absolutely everything so it's super confident. Yeah, maybe. But what they're really doing is trying to flood the horse. They're throwing so much stuff at that horse that the horse just sort of s shuts down, stands still, and you can get on it. That works for some horses, but it doesn't work for all the horses. And if you watched Way, Way of the Horse um, in Melbourne uh, last time, you would have seen a, a good example of it not working because he was, just, he was just scaring the horse. And so, yes, I want my horse confident about stuff, but at the same time, I'm not trying to scare this guy. You know? I don't want him to be scared. So there's a very fine line between you doing an, enough of this and doing too much, or bringing out too many toys. It's not about scaring your horse. I don't want your horse scared. I want him confident, and he, he might be able to cope with the saddle blanket and saddle first day, but if you brought out something extra, that big beach ball, he might just leave the planet, because he says, it's just too much, can't cope, too much. So if your goal, particularly if you're on a timeline, is to get a horse ridden, you just set yourself back that entire session because you got him good and comfortable and relaxed about these things. He says, yeah, I can handle that. That's all right. That's fine. And then you bring out scary thing number three, big beach ball, and he goes, uh -uh. can't cope today. Too much. So you went from a horse you probably could have ridden to a horse you now can't ride because you've scared him. So how much is too much? Just depends on your horse. This stuff is about getting your horse confident. You've got the rest of his life to get him good with stuff and do tricks and beach balls and play soccer and tarps and all the other things in the world you want to do. There we go. 